Coming up on Soul Care. There are so many things that happen in life that cause us to kind of be blocked off to correction because of how vulnerable it makes us feel. But there's a scripture and it says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing into the heart. So it's okay when you seek healing and seek to learn how to forgive that you feel convicted or you feel like, wow, I, I could have done something differently. That's okay because we're meant to learn and grow and evolve, but you will never learn and you will never grow and you will never evolve until you realize that you are being molded into the highest version of yourself every day. And there's room, there's grace for any mistakes that may be made along the way. guys welcome to soul care where we are all about living from a place of wholeness if this is your very first time joining us welcome to our cozy family this is a safe space where we encourage healing truth and transparency and today we are going to jump right in today we are discussing the power of forgiveness and when you talk about forgiveness it has many levels to it Forgiveness can be forgiving someone who didn't understand you all the way to forgiving someone who has hurt you, who has raped you, who has abused you, who has used you. The power of forgiveness comes into play when we think of how much we need it and then how much others need it around us in order for us to live in a world that is filled with more empathy, more kindness, more truth. So let's get down to business. I'm going to start off by reading Psalms 86 and 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will have your way in this moment with us, that none of us will leave the same, but that we will be transformed in our minds, that we will receive the healing necessary to walk out what true forgiveness looks like in our lives. Father, we expect a shift. We expect a move as we come together saying we need you, your help, your wisdom, your love, more of you and less of us, Father. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the topic of forgiveness is something that God really, really had to teach me about because it's one thing to receive the love of God and the forgiveness of God, and it's another thing to become a vessel that is so anchored in God that understands every single person around you, whether you are aware of it or not, deserves, is worthy of forgiveness. And I believe there are three dimensions to forgiveness that we're going to focus on today, and we're going to call it our triangle of forgiveness But there really are dimensions of forgiveness. And as we know it as people is the 3D, the physical. You know, we can just say, I forgive you and think that that may be where it starts and ends. But forgiveness is an inside job. Forgiveness is something that you can profess but still hold the weight of it in your heart. And unforgiveness produces unconscious worry. And worry can birth things like weariness, a lack of creativity, and poor decision-making. When you have the weight of unforgiveness on you, it follows you. It follows you into work, into your romantic life, into your job, your career, your situations. And the weight of unforgiveness can show up like you saying things like all men are the same or all women are the same or all bosses are the same because there was one or maybe more than one that bruised you so badly that it left a mark on you that now you live with the eyes of hurt instead of the eyes of an understanding of what really forgiving someone looks like and how it plays out in your life. Unforgiveness is something that we must not take lightly because it causes us to have the bad fruit of bitterness grow in our hearts. And when bitterness grows in our hearts, it's something that makes us look at life in a way that we are the victim and we are not the victim. No matter what you've been through, though you may have been called the victim, though you may have felt like the victim, you are victorious. 
You have won because you have Jesus. You have won because you're still here. And until we realize that we may have had the title of victim, but that's not our identity, we will have trouble walking out forgiveness because we feel like people owe us something. It's so easy to feel like someone owes you something when you feel like you didn't get what you hoped to get in maybe return of your actions or your love or your care or even your apology. It's possible to apologize and forgive someone, but them not have the enlightened understanding to pour out that same love back to you. So today we're talking about three folds of forgiveness. And the first fold of forgiveness is to accept and know the forgiveness of God. And if we're picturing this triangle, picture the forgiveness of God at the top of that triangle. Because when we say things like all men are the same or all women are the same or all my bosses have treated me badly or, or no one ever respects me and loves me, when we say these things enough, they begin to settle in other dimensions like the spirit. They begin to settle in places where we are most blessed, but now we're pushing a different agenda that we don't have the favor of God, but we do. That we can't trust others, but God is trying to send people that trust you and that you can trust. So forgiveness opens us up to receive the blessings of God. And that is why I believe the most important thing, the foundational thing is to accept and know the forgiveness of God. So I'm going to read from Psalms 78. 34 to 39, and it reads, when he, being God, then, when he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and sought earnestly for God, it's saying when God slew them, when God hurt them, then they sought him. Sometimes God uses situations that may hurt us to bring us to our knees, to bring us to a place of humility, crying out and returning to God. And they returned and sought earnestly for God. Then they remembered that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they flattered him with their mouth and they lied to him with their tongue for their heart was not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. But he, being God, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that passes away and does not come again. A breath that passes away and does not come again. So this scripture is really opening up the empathy, the sympathy, the love that is in the eyes of God when he looks at man. Whether we are fully aware of it or not, there are many things, many a times a day that we do that offend God. And until we begin to revere God, we won't understand the travesty that is offending God and why we need his forgiveness. But today we want to unpack the reason why we need to accept and know the forgiveness of God. And sometimes it's hard to accept forgiveness because that is also accepting that you've done something wrong. But we must detach the idea of doing wrong and being wrong. Just because you have done something wrong does not mean your identity is wrong. Does not mean your view on life is completely wrong, is completely skewed. Sometimes we view correction as so embarrassing because it showed a part of our weakness. But until we become a people that are okay with being wrong, not understanding it does not make your identity wrong, understanding that it does not make your identity wrong, it'll always be hard to be corrected because you'll feel like someone's calling you all the way out when they're just trying to, trying to fix you in your mind a little bit by how you do things. So it's so important that we understand when God is correcting us, when he is showing us another way, that we open our minds to being corrected so that we can walk away better. There are so many things that happen in life that cause us to kind of be blocked off to correction because of how vulnerable it makes us feel. 
But there's a scripture and it says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, piercing into the heart. So it's okay when you seek healing and seek to learn how to forgive that you feel convicted or you feel like, wow, I, I could have done something differently. That's okay because we're meant to learn and grow and evolve, but you will never learn and you will never grow and you will never evolve until you realize that you are being molded into the highest version of yourself every day. And there's room, there's grace for any mistakes that may be made along the way. It's okay to have messed up. We need God's forgiveness because it brings us back to the mindset of Eden. And when I set out to begin soul care, one thing that God spoke to me about is being naked with God in the garden before sin. That we as people have the power to go back to Eden because Eden is not just a place, it's a mindset. A mindset pre-sin, a mindset where we walked with God who is a sinless God. Which brings us to our next scripture. 1 John 1, 5 to 9. And it says, fellowship with him and one another. This is the message which we have heard from God and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's where we want to hone in, is First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then I want to go back and read this part in First John 1 and 5, where it says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Because if you don't believe God or believe in God, you may say, well, why do I need the forgiveness of God? Who is God that I should value his forgiveness? And it's even hard for me to say because he's created us. You are not random. You were strategically placed on this earth. You are not a mistake no matter what your parents say, no matter what divorce or trauma has been in your lineage. You were not a mistake. God knew you would be here and has prepared a way for you. But in order to receive the love of a sinless God, we must understand he's the only one that can truly forgive us. Like we've spoken about in the past, when we talk about sinning, it is missing the mark of God, not missing the mark of man. And how would you know the mark of God on your life if you do not know God? It's like saying, how would you know what your father expects of you if you don't know your father? Because he's there to guide you, show you, teach you, and help you to grow. So the first fold is understanding and accepting the love of God. And if we go right off of our scripture, all that takes is to actually confess. God, forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing. God, cleanse me from the unrighteous acts I have committed. God, show me a better way to live in this earthen vessel, this, this vessel that he knows, like the scripture we just read says, is merely a breath. God looks at us with such sympathy because he knows we are so fragile and we were actually born into sin, born into a place that is already missing the mark of God, born into a place that does not know God. So of course it would be a challenge to get to know him in a place like this. And the second fold of this is to have and pour forgiveness onto yourself. This may actually be the hardest for many because forgiving yourself requires seeing yourself. And when you know what you've done and what you've been through and what you've seen, it's hard to unpack that in a way that says, everything that brought me here, it's still gonna work for my good. 
The forgiveness of God is a prerequisite to the true forgiveness of self because when you sinned or have sinned, it was missing the mark of the creator. And we must make that distinction between missing the mark of the creator and missing the mark of creation, offending someone, offending yourself even, and understand that God is a sinless God. So if we miss the mark of him, it simply could show an ignorance that can be made up with his wisdom. It can show a naive that could be made up with years, with maturity, with understanding, with learning, with concepts being brought to light in our minds. But we must understand that and if you do not give grace to the creation you will always be missing the mark of the creator because a part of the gospel is understanding the good news is you're forgiven. The good news is God says that his blood can cover all things, seen and unseen, things that others know and others don't know about you. We must give grace to ourselves because we, as the creation, are dealing with multiple influences, many being evil many being evil, and I'm going to break down this word evil to us. The word evil is characterized or accompanied by misfortune or suffering, unfortunate, disastrous. So when we talk about evil, it's not just this concept of a red devil sitting and and marking his gavel and smoking weed. The The devil is not down there smoking weed and partying and loving It's not saying anything is right or wrong. I'm just saying we've made a a light picture of what hell is. We've made a light picture of what evil is, not understanding that this is something a far greater force is using to romanticize things that are actually life and death. We must stop romanticizing hell. We must not romanticize the devil and what he does because what he does is truly want to get to your mind. He uses it in the way of of people and things to manipulate you. But ultimately, what he desires is your soul, that mind, your emotions, your intellect, your will. The devil is not down there partying. He's not down there raging. He's down there plotting on how to make you feel like less than, on how to make you feel confused and unworthy of love and forgiveness. And he's not calling the shots. Ultimately, he has some power, but we must not confuse the twisted power of the enemy with the all-knowing, all-powerful power of God. The enemy, the opposer, when we talk about the devil, we, we can call him the opposer interchangeably because he is our only enemy. And what he would do is have us go through different situations in life where we begin to look at others as the enemy because of something they've done or something they've said. And really, that's a ploy too, to get us to look at this thing in the flesh and on understanding who's causing them to do these things. Who's causing me to be in this cycle of unforgiveness, this cycle of brokenness, this cycle of understanding that is so low that it causes me to not understand who I am. When I was studying this topic, I realized that that old saying that says hurt people hurt people applies most in the spirit because the devil, the opposer, is the most hurt one. And all he wants to do is make sure he has company. All he wants to do is make sure that we don't see this thing correctly to the point where we end up not understanding the power that's in our own souls. The devil is the most hurt one. And all he's desiring to do is still kill and destroy your peace, your mind, your soul, your life, your actions. But we can turn this thing around at any moment and say that we are the head and not the tail. When you have knowledge and understanding that, is what is revelation. And I pray that that is what this time is of revelation, that it's never too late to be forgiven, no matter what you've done. When we talk about forgiveness, there are so many levels to it that we have to make sure we're sensitive to the depths of what forgiveness can mean from a family member to a friend to an ex, someone who you brought into your life closely but soon realize they weren't the one for you. Things like that, ripping apart soul ties, ripping apart friendships, betrayal, misunderstanding, it's hurtful. 
but it's also something that we can't run away from. If we run away from the topics that hurt the most, we will be neglecting the very art of what the gospel is, that the past is the past, and what we have to look forward to is always greater, always better. Unforgiveness is a sin of the spirit. And when we talk about sins of the spirit, this is something that you obviously don't see, but it can bear such bad fruit that it will affect the way you show up in life. The battle of your soul, of your mind, is ultimately what goes on every day. But if your spirit does not yield to truth, your soul and body can, as a result, be deprived of growing better And instead of growing better and seeking that freedom every day, you will grow bound and bitter. And bitterness is something that can drop in you. And if you are conscious enough, you will release it. And that isn't my portion. But bitterness is also something that, if not treated, can continue to take root. And then it actually affects all the fruit that comes from you. So be willing to say to self, You have been in a place that has not known or understand you, understood you or your God. So it's no surprise that we were out here making mistakes or following the wrong way. But now it's time for us to say, wait, we don't have to go the way of what everyone else says. We don't have to say such harsh things to self thinking that it's going to equate to humility. Humility is not being so hard on yourself. It's honoring yourself enough to understand, I need God and I need him so much so that me simply understanding and accepting the fact that I need him makes me worthy in this day for all good things. Humility comes when we understand we cannot do this thing on our own. And just as bitterness and unforgiveness produces a bad fruit, the fruit of self-forgiveness is peace and a new mindset of gentleness towards your own identity. You can be kind to every single person you see, but if you are not kind to yourself, the one you sleep with at night, the one you talk to the most, if you will not be gentle and kind with yourself, you'll be missing the very blessing of being whole. Because to be whole is the fact that nothing is missing from who you are. And the fruits of the spirit are ones that, you know, you may know them, the gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, love, peace, joy. They can seem so list-like, but when you really begin to break it down, see which one of them you need to pray for. See which one of them you need to ask God, increase my gentleness towards self because I'm so hard on myself. If you are anything like me and pursue a life of absolute excellence, You can be so hard on yourself, trying to show up in situations that make you feel like you don't have what it takes simply because you've set the bar of what it takes as something you've never seen. But if you are creating something you've never seen, of course, that's going to be a bumpy ride. Of course, that's going to be a ride that affects you in a way that causes you to have to be stretched and challenged. And the third fold of our forgiveness triangle is to share forgiveness with others. Because I truly found it that once I accepted the love and forgiveness of God, and once I forgave myself, forgiving others was so easy. I should say much easier. Because no matter what they did, I realized that most of it was not intentionally rooted in an evil place to hurt me, or it was simply out of ignorance. And when we talk about ignorance, it's simply not knowing something. Ignorant to the fact that they didn't have to do that. Ignorant to the fact that it could have been spoken about instead of just a decision made. Ignorance to the fact that we don't have to do things in a way that we victimize only ourselves and say, they did this to me. But we can also see how are they also possibly going through something that my forgiveness could help them get through. When you are full of the knowledge that we all fall short somewhere, it makes forgiving others easier. And I'm going to read from John 20, 23. 
It says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So we got some definitions today. We're going to define the word retained. And it means not lost, destroyed, not released, not given away, or kept. Kept in use or practice, preserved, remembered, or kept in mind. So reading that again, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. If you keep the sins of any, they are kept in use or practice. They are preserved, remembered, kept in mind. So our inability to release unforgiveness is now saying, whatever offended me, I want to keep it. Whatever offended me, I want it to grow. And really, we, we would think the absolute opposite. So if you retain, if you keep playing back the sins of many, if you keep playing back the things that hurt you, all you're doing is making a tree of bad fruit grow even bigger. All you're doing is making a tree that hurt you grow even taller. When God's trying to chop that thing down and saying that just as you are worthy of my forgiveness, so are they. We can't hold people hostage to our idea of what should have been. We have to let go with it of the fact that we may have hoped for something and it didn't happen. I forgive you for not living up to my own expectation of what you should have done. I forgive you, even if you don't say it to them. Saying it to yourself can be so powerful. Releasing others from the expectation of your hope can set you free and set even those who come after you free because we realize though we have expectations of others, at the end of the day, it's God's plan that prevails. And our very last scripture of the day is gonna be Matthew six fourteen. Matthew six fourteen reads, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. And I was very perplexed reading this. And I'm not going to lie. There are still parts of it that I don't know the full meaning of. But I realized that this could possibly be God's heavenly, divine, so open and big way of saying that. Treat others how you'd like to be treated. If you desire forgiveness, forgive others. Does it sound easier than it is? Yes. But doesn't, doesn't the fact that God forgave you mean that you should forgive someone? Not because they deserve it. Because let's be honest, we don't deserve the forgiveness of God, but because they're worthy of it. And they're deserving of a new start, if not anything, so that they can do this life a little better in the future. We must set a new expectation and stop manifesting things that we hate. If you keep retaining the sins of others, all you're doing is manifesting more of that. If you are the type of person that thinks all blank are the same, you must continue to realize that you may be manifesting the same exact thing over and over because you're causing yourself to speak these things like all blank are the same without saying that one thing may have hurt me, but this is a time in my life where I can welcome new and I can welcome different. So in a deep breath, I just want us to say together, I forgive myself and others. I release myself and others. And have a moment with God. I can't do this part for you, but forgive yourself for what you've done. Forgive yourself for what you've seen and been through and who may have hurt you or mistreated you. And realize God never will. He wants to show you the forgiveness of God and show you the love of God and show you the care of God that is so special but must be invited. I always say that God is a gentleman and he must be invited into your situation in order to truly transform it and cause you to go away different, sinless, naked with him, unafraid with him, that all things are still possible. So our practice for this week, and this one ain't easy, but it's to practice not being easily offended. Because I believe we live in a world that is so offended, so offended, 
Therefore, we just produce more offense to others because we're hurt, we're angry, we're mad, we feel unjustified, we feel walked over and silenced. But once you realize that the main one that matters, God, has heard your cry, has heard your plea to him, he will send the right people in your path that will honor you, love you, and treat you right. So the second part of this practice, in addition to not being easily offended, and how we do this is realizing that I'm already loved by God. If you don't love me right, I'm going to wait for the right person that will. I'm already chosen by God. I already know who I am. If you don't know who I am, or if you don't recognize who I am, if you don't honor who I am, I'm okay with that. Because at the end of the day, you're going to respect who I am. Not that you liked me, but you're going to respect the fruit of someone who is whole, because how can they not? People recognize things that they don't often outwardly recognize. But when you are a woman or a man who has held your self-standard so high, God will honor that and bring you to a place of only being surrounded by the people who honor, love you, and who you're able to trust. The second part of our practice is to trust, and this is a daily trusting activity trust that god will send the right people and things that will honor and love you it's harder to trust god when you haven't yet seen any of what he's doing new in your life it's harder to let go of your will and say things like not my will but yours when you haven't yet seen any of the fruit of god's will but you're seeing it right now by being able to say maybe it's time to turn the page and leave unforgiveness in the past and say that because I'm forgiven by God, because I'm worthy of his forgiveness, that means I forgive myself. There's nothing hanging over your head anymore. The past is the past. It has no power over you. And just as you are worthy of forgiveness, so are everyone else around you, even the ones that are not as easy to forgive. So we're just going to pray right now and end this out saying that you can do it. Practice not being easily offended. They just don't know who you are. They just don't know who you are yet. But when they see the fruit of the best version of you, maybe you'll hear back. Maybe you'll understand more. Maybe you'll just continue to walk until God shows you a clearer vision for your future. But whatever it is, know that God's got you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of truth. Lord, I pray that whoever is struggling to forgive or to understand that they are forgiven, that the weight of unforgiveness will not leave this place with us. We call it done, and we say that now we are expecting better. We are expecting love and kindness and gentleness to flow from us like never before. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope this blessed you guys. If it did, share it with a friend. Share it with anyone. Just know that your time is here to be free. Don't let the weight of unforgiveness hold you back from that. I love y'all. Peace.